Hello and welcome to this final film um, for the year 12 Acids and Bases topic. Uh, the idea of it is really to go through some tricky acid base questions. That is not to say that they're particularly hard, it's just that often ones that people that catch people out in exams. Because what can seem obvious is not necessarily correct. Okay? So hopefully by the end of this film you'll have a scene of a range of questions that trick people, even though they're not trick questions. Okay, so first one, true or false, two acids of equal concentration, one strong, one weak, are titrated using dilute sodium hydroxide. So we've got a strong base with a weak acid and a strong acid. The unfortunate thing about these curves which I'm going to use is that they're all starting in the base region. Okay, so um, I'm adding sodium hydroxide to these acids. All right, so one strong, one weak. Here's our strong acid, so I'm going to use this titration curve, but we're going to go from the opposite end. We're going to imagine that we're adding base, okay? We're ending up at high pH of sodium hydroxide, and we've also got our weak acid and our strong base, okay? So these are the two curves we're going to use. We're starting sort of medium and ending up high, and starting low and ending up high, all right? It says the strong acid will require more sodium hydroxide to reach equivalence. Now the reason this often catches people out, I suppose, is because if I have a strong acid, I know that it ionizes completely. Right? If I have a weak acid, I know that it only ionizes partially. Okay? In other words, a small proportion of these acid molecules will form the conjugate base. And in other words, the concentration of H plus here will be lower than the concentration of H plus there. And then people think, well, if that's the case, then I'll need less sodium hydroxide to react with this than I will to react with this. Now, the thing that's wrong with that, I suppose, or the way to, one way of explaining why that's wrong, is to consider that in both reactions, I've got H plus plus OH minus forming H2O. It's a one-to-one -one reaction, and it's a one-to-one -one reaction whether I write it with ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide or with HCl and sodium hydroxide. That's a quite a simplistic, or almost a quite a simplistic way of looking at it. Okay, a slightly more detailed way of explaining it is to say, well, as soon as my hydro sodium hydroxide reacts with NaH plus over here, this equilibrium will shift to the right because the concentration of this has fallen. So the equilibrium will try and re-establish that concentration, and so some more of this will ionize, and that will keep happening until all the H plus ions are gone from here. So in other words. Although there aren't this, uh, as big a number of H plus ions around in this solution as there are in this one, by the time I've added sodium hydroxide or enough sodium hydroxide to react with all of this, then there will have been enough H, or there will have been the same number of H plus ions released into this solution as there were here. It's just they weren't there at the start. They just started getting released. Okay, so this is false. They both need exactly the same amount of sodium hydroxide. Okay, true or false, two acids of the same concentration, one strong, one weak, are reacted with magnesium ribbon. The strong acid will react more quickly than the weak one. Well, sort of following on from the, uh, from the previous question, you might think, well, there'll be no difference. Okay, but notice this is not a stoichiometry question anymore. This is a rates question, and we've got magnesium reacting with um, H plus ions to form magnesium ions and hydrogen, okay, and in order for this reaction to happen, these two particles have to collide. All right now, in the strong acid, the concentration of the hydrogen ions will be much higher than it is in the weak acid, so there'll be more particles per unit volume, and collisions will happen more often, and the rate will be higher. So this one is actually true. Okay, they'll both produce the same amount of hydrogen, right, because eventually the weak acid will release all the, the same number of H plus ions, but the reaction will be faster with the strong acid. Okay, moving on. True or false, 20 milliliter aliquots of nitric acid are titrated against ammonia solution. Again, we've got this unfortunate situation where we've got our acid to begin with and we're adding ammonia, so these titration curves are kind of the wrong way round. In other words, we're starting from this end and heading that way. We've got Nitric acid, so we've got a strong acid, so it's going to be one of these two curves. But we've got ammonia, 
which is the weak base. So we're not going to end up at the pH 14. We're going to end up at a medium sort of pH. So we're going to use this titration curve. Okay. Or we don't have to use a titration curve, but we could have it in mind. Using phenolphthalein as an indicator. Now remember, phenolphthalein changes in the range of 8 to 10. Okay. What we should have used here would have been an indicator that changed in the acidic range because equivalence is taking place at an acidic pH. Okay, so we want an endpoint that matches equivalence. So methyl orange would have been good. Okay, phenolphthalein is not good. Um, the measured titer volume, so how much ammonia do I have to add? Remember, we're heading this way. Okay, I've got to add more ammonia before I get to the color change. Right? So, in other words, if I use phenolphthalein, I'm going to get a larger titer than if I'd used methyl orange. It's going to be artificially large. It's not going to be smaller than the true value. It's going to be artificially large, so this one's false. Okay, moving on. Which of the following reactions is not acid base? I suppose the one that leaps off the page is this one, because it doesn't look like there's an acid there at all. There is a base, but remember that water can act as an acid, and it can give H plus to the ammonia. All right, and if that happens, then we're going to make the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. So in other words, this isn't about spotting whether there is an acid and a base in the equation or in the reactants. It's about seeing whether there's an H plus transfer. Okay? And certainly there's H plus being given from the water to the ammonia here. Sodium hydroxide solution is mixed with sulfuric acid. H plus from the sulfuric acid is reacting with OH minus from the sodium hydroxide and forming the conjugate acid of the hydroxide ion, and that's water. So that's an acid-base reaction. Sodium is placed in the beaker of dilute nitric acid. Not really on this topic. It's more of a redox question, and I suppose that's giving away the answer, but two sodium atoms will react with two hydrogen ions to form two sodium ions and hydrogen. Okay, so there's been an exchange of electrons, but not of protons. Okay, the H plus ions haven't been given to anything; they've just changed into hydrogen. Okay, so there, so far, we've got two acid-base reactions and one not. Ethanoic acid reacting with calcium carbonate. We've got the carbonate ion from the calcium carbonate, or strictly speaking, I suppose it's going to be CaCO3 because it's a solid, it's not soluble. But essentially, to cut a long story short, right, the carbonate ion is turning into water and carbon dioxide. And to do that, it, you've got the carbon and the three oxygens, but you need some hydrogen. And the H plus is going to come from the acid. It's going to be given to the carbonate ion. Okay? This isn't the ionic equation I would write, because I've got an insoluble solid here and a weak acid, which I wouldn't write as ions in the reactants. But it's just to show you that H plus is being given from the acid to the carbonate. Okay, So there's our not acid base reaction in that list. Moving on, which of the following does not or do not represent a conjugate acid base pair? So let's write the formulas for these things and remember that a conjugate acid base pair have to be different by one H plus ion. Okay, Ethanoic acid and the ethanoate ion. CH3COOH and CH3COO minus. If you take away H plus from that, you get that. So these two are a conjugate acid base pair. Water and the hydroxonium ion. What on earth is the hydroxonium ion, you might ask? The hydroxonium ion is the H3O plus ion that you've seen quite a lot of. And it's got one more H plus than water. It's the conjugate acid of water. They're a conjugate pair. Water and the oxide ion, you might be thinking, what on earth has the oxide ion got to do with anything here? Well, if you think about it, right? if I take one H plus away from water, I'll get the hydroxide ion. If I take an H plus away from the hydroxide ion, I'll make the oxide ion. So I could conceivably have an acid-base reaction that would form an oxide ion from water. right? But because they're two H pluses different, they're not a conjugate pair. right? The conjugate base of water is hydroxide, and the conjugate base of hydroxide is oxide, but these two are not a conjugate pair. Right? Ammonia and the ammonium ion, I've seen this so many times, but let's just write them out again. Okay? Here's the conjugate acid of this base, conjugate base of this acid, different by one H plus ion, and the so that is the conjugate pair, and sulfuric acid and the sulfate ion 
H2SO4 and SO42 minus. Now, if you're a year 11, you may well consider that these two are a conjugate pair because you may be in the habit of writing that in a hydrolysis equation, turning into that. As if the first ionization, which forms the hydrogen sulfate ion, is strong and the second one is strong, but we must remember in year 12 that that one is weak. Okay, but that's kind of beside the point a bit here anyway, because this is the conjugate acid of the sulfate ion. The sulfate ion is the conjugate acid of the hydrogen sulfate ion. These two are different by two protons, so they're not a conjugate pair. Okay, but do remember this strong weak thing in year 12. It's not something from year 11. Okay, moving on. This is a bit of a curly question. Um, and I'll show you why, because pH, remember, is minus log of the H plus ion concentration, minus log of 10 to the minus 8 is simply 8. So that's easy enough, isn't it? It's not a very hard question. Well, what's odd about this? Well, we've got a basic pH for a solution of an acid. I suppose, strictly speaking, this question should have said at 25 degrees centigrade, to be really precise. Okay, and maybe that gives us a clue about what we need to do. Kw equals the concentration of H plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus. Okay, and if you think about it, before I even dissolved the hydrochloric acid in the water, um, well, this is always true, but even before I dissolved the hydrochloric acid in the water, and these two were equal, then the pH was 7 because the concentration of H plus was 10 to the minus 7. So in other words, if I add H plus ions, I'm not going to get a concentration of H plus smaller than that, which is precisely what I've written here. Okay, So in actual fact, the concentration of H plus is going to be 10 to the minus 7 plus 10 to the minus 8. And that equals 1.1 times 10 to the minus 7. And if I take the negative log of that number, then I find that the pH equals 6.96. Okay, so um, just be a little bit careful about that. It's a, it's a bit of a mean question, really, and it, it, you don't see questions like that very often, but it's worth looking out for ones like that. Okay, and I suppose it highlights the need to remember what KW is. Okay, final question. True or false, a solution with a pH of 6 cannot be considered neutral. Well, it doesn't have a pH of 7, so people would often say, well, that's not neutral. But remember, neutral is defined as a solution that has the same concentrations of, oops, I put an equal sign in there, just wedge one in, same concentrations of H plus and OH minus. And all that KW tells us is that the concentrations multiplied together have to equal 10 to the minus 14. Now clearly this can't be true if the pH is going to be 6, right? Because these two being, and, and sorry, if the pH is going to be 6 and the solutions can be neutral, because if those two were both the same as one another and the pH is 6, then that's 10 to the minus 6. That's 10 to the minus 6, and that equals 10 to the minus 12. But remember, this is temperature dependent, okay? Like any equilibrium, the equilibrium where water is turning into H plus and OH minus is influenced by temperature, okay? So, yes, we could get Kw to be, uh, to be much larger than this, 100 times larger. We'd have to have much higher concentrations of these two ions, They'd still be equal to one another, but the concentration of this could go as high as 10 to the minus 6, but I'd have to heat the water up quite a lot to break up more molecules, okay? Because remember, this is endothermic. In other words, high temperatures favour the forward reaction. I think, actually, um, uh, you'd never get to a pH of 6 before the water boiled, um, but that's not really the spirit of the question. Anyway, um, hopefully those things made sense. If not, or if I've made any howlers on the film, um, then please comment on YouTube or come and let me know and we'll get those fixed and uh, we'll answer any questions you've got. Um, that's the end of all the films about the acids and bases topic. So good luck with your tests, good luck with your exams and practice.